a blessed Advent season to you all, and a happy Church New Year. We have got some delightfully chipper readings today to get us in the mood of hopeful anticipation. First, there is Isaiah's lament. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. Then there's the psalmist's cry. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Finally, there's Jesus, with words more fitting to Halloween than to Advent. After that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven. Happy Advent! You know, when the letter from St. Paul is the most cheerful reading of the bunch, you know we are in trouble. <laughs> now, being the smart Episcopalians that you are, you already know one reason why our readings are so apocalyptic at this time of year. Prior to about the year 600, the church began its calendar year not with Advent, but with Christmas Day. So Advent actually came at the end of the church year, with a focus, understandably, on the end times, the last judgment. That's why things are so dire this morning. But as early as the seventh century, Advent was switched over to mark the beginning of the church year. This was done in part to mark it as a season of preparation for catechumens, those preparing to be baptized on the Feast of the Epiphany, January 6th. So in a way, Advent paralleled back then the season of Lent, and now itself Lent being a time of preparation for baptism at the Easter Vigil. Today, Advent as a season actually means to prepare us for Christmas instead, and the arrival of Jesus. So there's a historical reason for these ominous readings and for the season's mix of both end times and anticipation of new life. But I want to do something very different today to get us on the path of this sacred season in 2020. Because of all this apocalyptic talk, I would normally be laying into you about how you might not be doing all you can as a good Christian to prepare your heart to welcome baby Jesus at Christmas. I would point out somber passages from our readings like I just did, as well as the apocalyptic aspects of the scripture passages that are used generally at this time of year. Signs of ending and destruction, warnings to keep awake as in today's gospel. But you know, this year my heart is just not in it. After all, we've kind of had a worldwide pandemic for the last nine months. Maybe I should go easy on you. With that in mind, I have a few things to say that may help lighten your mood while still encouraging you to prepare for this season of expectation and longing. First, you know how at this time of year you might hear preachers from the pulpit chastising you for all the ways you are not behaving in a properly somber Advent mode? Pointing out that all the parties you're attending, the mad rush of consumerist Christmas shopping you're doing, and the Christmas cards you're sending out to people you never speak to anymore but feel obligated at Christmas time to send a pre-made card to with a typed up year in review and no personal touch at all? You know how preachers love pointing out that all that activity is keeping you from focusing on the coming of Christ? Well, guess what? I promise you won't get that this year. Because COVID has ruined much of the joyful mayhem of this season. So my preacherly admonitions that you consider staying home and praying a little more, spending time with family and with God, and not running around, doesn't seem as necessary this year. And it might sound like a bummer, and really it is, but if you think about it, we have been in Advent season mode for almost nine months already. Longing, waiting, 
missing, keeping awake and cautious every time we step out our front door, asking God to come and save us once more. We've got this down. I have never prayed as much or as fervently as I have in these past eight months. And judging by how active you are during our online services with your typed in prayer requests in the comments section of Facebook, neither have you. Thus, you will not be receiving my usual gentle scolding to keep it in check this year. We've had too much of check keeping already. So I have a very different bit of spiritual advice for you. Celebrate as much as you can. Put your Christmas tree up early if it's not already up. Sing the Christmas carols you're not supposed to even think about until December 24th. And find ways to not isolate as safely as you can this Advent season. Write cards to people you don't talk to anymore and tell them that you love them and that you cherish those old times you had together. Continue being generous with donations to charities. Consider increasing your gift card donations to our Advent giving tree. But also, be good to yourself. Treat yourself. Make eggnog and toss in an extra shot of brandy. These have been hard times. And while it might be good advice most years to encourage abstaining in Advent, this year I want to say, focus instead on being kind to yourself and compassionate with others. However, and this is my second point, my encouraging word to guide you through this season, let that kindness and compassion be mindful of God's presence in your life. If you indulge in some way, say a prayer of thanksgiving to God that you and we all have made it through this terrible year. Take nothing for granted. Since most of us have been stripped of the usual distractions that might keep us from focusing on God in our lives, let this Advent season be one of both celebration and true and focused anticipation. Even as we pine for the day when a vaccine is available for all to take, let us also pine for the sort of spiritual healing that can come when we settle our hearts down and ask Jesus to be born again in us. Now, it might seem contradictory to tell you to both celebrate and be mindful. But this year, I think those two things overlap. Let us celebrate in our own ways that bring us joy, but in the midst of it, remember how God has blessed us and kept us healthy this year. And let us pray more mindfully this December than we have in the past because there's seemingly so much more that needs to be prayed over. But don't let it make your heart so heavy anymore. Remember that God loves you. Remember that you have a faith community that cares about you. Remember that you have family, friends, co-workers, and that we're all in this together. Pray for them all and pray for the lonely too. But take heart and know that Christmas will yet come again this year. The readings during Advent tend towards the dire and apocalyptic. And there are liturgical and symbolic reasons for that. Today's gospel lesson repeats the phrase, keep awake. And in years past, I have always seen that as a warning a red alert, uh, keep awake, you better be ready when Christ comes again or you will be thrown into the outer darkness. But this year, I think I truly see it for the first time in the way it was meant to be heard. Not as anxiety producing, but as an invitation to awareness. Keep awake. 
how might you go about the activities that bring you joy in December and bring Jesus along with you? Can you make a project out of these next four weeks, an intention to really hold life close and dear in these days of so much death and be thankful as you celebrate life and joyful as you pray on it? That is my wish for you this Advent season. Keep awake, because there is so much to be grateful for. And being ready to receive the Christ child into your heart is not so much about red alert preparedness. It's about the quiet mindfulness that comes when you're engaged in a project that you love, one where the hours go by and you don't even notice one that so immerses and engages your mind and your heart that when it's over, it feels like you've awakened out of a trance, feeling contented and whole. May God bless you this Advent season with such mindfulness in all you do, the joyful and the serious. Amen.